home or wherever you happen to be. I'm Miss Jamie and welcome back to another Art Explorations for Kids. So today we're going to learn about cubism. Cubism is a style of art in which several different portions of the painting are segmented and show an object at different times. And cubism is called cubism because of all the different sections resembling either squares or other geometric shapes. However, our painting today is going to be a simplified version of that in which we just take a clover and split it up into different sections to create that cubism look. So we're going to start off by creating a stencil for our clover. And what we want to do is just make a little point near the center of our paper with our jumbo jet and make a heart shape going outward and back in. And you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of space between the side of your clover and the edge of your paper. So what you're going to do now is cut this out so that you have a stencil to use. And I will give you some time to do that. And when we come back, we'll make our clover. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like this that we're going to use for our stencil. So what you want to do now is make a point somewhere in the upper middle of your paper and we're going to take this stencil which is one leaf of our clover and angle it off to the left and just trace around it with our jumbo jet. And you can see I've gone over my stencil a little bit. If you do too, that's okay. So just make sure you're holding down your stencil really well and you can just go along the outside and make up for where you may have gone onto your stencil and not the paper below. And then we're gonna flip and make our two bottom leaves. Okay, and so now we have our four leaf clover and we want to go ahead and add a stem at the bottom. So from this bottom left leaf, I'm just going to draw a curved line coming down, bring the bottom of the stem over, and then come back up to the right side of the leaf. Okay, so now we have our full clover drawn. We're going to go ahead and take a ruler or a straight edge and we're just going to draw lines in all different directions and yes even over our clover and you can pick wherever you would like these lines to go And you can see we're already starting to break up our picture into different geometric shapes that are going to be really interesting and fun to color in in just a moment. So if you have, so if you have some areas you see that are large, you might want to go ahead and break those up with a line. And this will just give you a lot of different segments for you to color in and play with and help give a lot of fun 
variation in your shapes. So now we are ready to go ahead and color in our clover. So what we want to do is take our Cezanne set of watercolor color pencils. We want to grab the three greens. Which are which are 042, 009, and 010. And we also want to grab three blues, which are going to be 030, 040, and 029. And we're going to use the greens to color in our clover and the blues to color in our background. So what I want you to do is go ahead and start coloring in your clover and the leaves and see I'm starting with this light green but instead of coloring beside now with the same green I'm going to color across So we want to do this just so we have different colors that are not directly beside each other creating a large chunk of color. We really want to break up these spaces into different colors of green. So what I want you to do now is just take a different green and keep applying that same idea. So I might use this darker green here and here and my third green here and here. Again, just making sure that we keep our colors meeting at points instead of at sides. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give you time to fill in your own clover, and when we come back, we'll look at them and then fill in our background. Okay, so now we're back and we have completed our clover. You can see I have gone ahead and colored in one of my pictures I have of a clover here with the different greens and how I have kept the greens separated in each of these different sections. And I want to keep doing that same thing with our three blues in our background. So we're just going to keep repeating that same technique. and pick a section to start with and just color in and I'm starting with the light blue you can start with whichever one you'd like and then go to my next blue Okay, and so I now have my two sections of blue, so I'm going to want to take my third blue and color in this section and this section. And then from there, I can go ahead and just sort of rotate around the paper and switch off between my different blues so that I create the same effect that I've created in my clover. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some time to fill in your background, and when we come back, we'll look at both of our pictures and see what we've created. So 
so welcome back. Now we have our completed clover pictures and you can see in here I have put all the different blues uh, making sure that I didn't have any of the two shades touching in the same uh, general vicinity. I have them across from each other and we now have these really cool cubist like um, pictures that we now get to show off to everybody. So, if you are happy with your picture where it is, you can go ahead and stop. This is the end of the beginning portion. However, if you would like to do a little bit more and practice some more advanced techniques, just stick around and we're going to start the advanced portion in just a second. Welcome back to the advanced portion of our lesson. What we're going to do now is take our brushes and we're going to apply some water in our clover and play with different techniques of pushing the color around that we've laid down on our paper with the water and really explore our watercolor pencils. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the number six Creative Inspirations brush, dip it in water, and apply it to one section of my clover. And once you start running out of water on your brush, just go ahead and dip and start going again in that same section. And when you're dipping your brush back in the water, make sure that you dab extra water that may be on there. If you get a lot of water in your brush and apply it to this paper, you may end up having uh, your colors run or you won't be able to work quickly enough that you can't control where the water's going. And so you just want to have just enough on your brush that you can apply it to the paper and activate your color pencil. And now that you've applied this water to one of these sections, you can also play with the texture and continue to move that color around if you'd like. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do this for the entire clover. Okay, so welcome back. Now we have our clover that we have taken our brush to and you can see in here I have all these fun different textures going in my different sections of my cubist clover with my watercolor color pencils. And you can also see the difference that it makes once we've added water from the dry application of our watercolor pencils to when we've added water. So if you are happy with your picture, and I'm going to leave mine the way it is too, then you can go ahead and put this up for everybody to see. If you would like to go ahead and complete your background uh, and add some water and get some of these other fun effects going in the background, go right ahead. So I hope you guys had fun following along. I had so much fun working on this project with you and I can't wait to see you on the next Art Explorations for Kids. <laughs>